Dream on Monkey Mountain is a play by the Nobel Prize winning St. Lucian poet and playwright Derek Walcott. It was first published in 1970 with a collection of short plays entitled Dream on Monkey Mountain and other plays. It was produced and broadcast on NBC in 1970. Produced off-Broadway by the Negro Ensemble Company in 1971, it won an Obie Award that year for Best Foreign Play. In a review of the Negro Ensemble production in The New Yorker, the journalist Edith Oliver called the play a masterpiece and a poem in dramatic form or a drama in poetry. Noting that poetry is rare in modern theater, like most of Walcott's works, the play is set on a Caribbean island. The plot centers on the black macaque, who despises himself for being black. After being imprisoned for destroying things in a local market, he has a vision in jail of a white goddess, who pushes him to return to Africa, in his dream. Macaque dreams of becoming a great warrior in Africa, convincing others to join him, and receiving support from the Ku Klux Klan. Finally, he beheads the white goddess of his dreams, and wakes up free from his obsession with whiteness, reconciled to his actual life. Macaque begins calling himself by his real name, Felix Hobane, and resolves to return home to Monkey Mountain. Describing his drama Dream on Monkey Mountain, 1970. Derek Walcott said. The play is a dream, one that exists as much in the given minds of its principal characters as in that of its writer. A Caribbean, Walcott wrote from a place of hybridity informed by the culture of Western white colonizers and by his identification with an idealized African ancestry. His play, described as phantasmagorical, blends music, mime, folklore and classical traditions to stage the story of Macaque, an impoverished old man who makes and peddles charcoal in a West Indian island village. Following a night in jail, during which he dreams about his own conflicted identities, Macaque is released with a newfound conviction that he and his people can only free their true selves by cultivating a singularly Caribbean consciousness. The prologue presents Macaque in jail on charges of drunk and disorderly conduct. It seems Macaque smashed up a cafe while shouting claims to royal African lineage. Two other prisoners share the stage with Macaque, Tigra, and Zurus. Corporal Lestrade bullies them. A mulatto himself, Lestrade serves as an agent of the white colonial rule, having internalized the colonial discourse of white superiority. Thus, he maligns his black-skinned prisoners as beasts, savages, cannibals, and niggers. Lestrade orders Macaque to state his name and race, but Macaque says he can't recall these things because he's too tired. A mock trial follows. Tigra and Zuris play the judges, while Lestrade takes the role of Macaque's lawyer. Lestrade presents the case, Macaque apparently dreamt that he is the direct descendant of African kings a healer and the savior of his race. This precipitated his outburst in the cafe. Macaque then defends his vision, claiming a white goddess appeared to him and revealed his nobility. He says she's present with them now in the prison, but the others scoff at him. He falls, and thus begins his dream. Act 1, Scene 1 returns to the morning before Macaque's arrest. He's lying in his hut on Monkey Mountain when his friend Moustique enters. He presses Macaque to collect his coal so they can take it down the mountain and sell it at the market. Preoccupied, Macaque tells Moustique of his encounter during the night with the apparition of a white goddess bearing the message of his African ancestral glory. Moustique doubts the woman could be real, and persuades Macaque to gather his goods for the market. Before heading down the mountain, Moustique is frightened by a spider and kills it. This is an omen signifying his forthcoming death. Scene 2 opens with white-robed women singing, followed by the arrival of a snake-bitten man carried on a stretcher. Macaque, believing himself a healer as proclaimed by the apparition, undertakes to cure man by pressing charcoal into his palm and reciting prayers. His efforts initially prove unsuccessful, and Basil, a coffin maker, and figure from Haitian mythology, looms like a vulture. Finally, the sick man rallies. 
Having facilitated Makak's involvement with the sick man to procure rewards, Mustik now receives gifts from the grateful villagers. While Makak genuinely wants to help others with his powers, Mustik hopes to capitalize on them for profit. A market is the setting for scene 3. As vendors recount the miraculous healing of the sick man, Makak grows into a folk hero. Mustik appears masquerading as Makak. In return for cash, he promises to cure any illness. But then, a spider's untimely landing spooks him. Basil, nearby, steps forward to help, discovers Mustik's deception, and exposes it. The angry crowd pounces on Mustik, beating him until Lestrade, also present, intervenes. Makak arrives just before Mustik dies. Although still within the context of the dream, the action in Act 2. Scene 1 moves back to the jail. Makak accuses Lestrade of allowing Mustique's death, while Tigra calculates how to exploit Makak's anger. He feigns faith in Makak's vision, and manipulates Makak into stabbing Lestrade. Filled with remorse after his violent act, Makak nevertheless frees the other two prisoners, and they all flee into the forest at the foothills of Monkey Mountain. Lestrade, suffering only minor wounds, pursues the fugitives, but first has a brush with Basil. In the dark woods, Lestrade wonders aloud what has happened to his mind, and Basil replies, It was never yours, Lestrade. Awakened to the colonized condition of his psyche, Lestrade joins Macaque and the other fugitives, ritualistically embracing his black identity. Act 2, Scene 3 is a collective dream within the extended dream sequence of the play. The characters have been transported from the forest to Africa, where they praise Macaque as he ascends a throne. In a parody of the Back to Africa movement, Macaque presides over a court where white culture is put on trial. Basil, the executioner, reads a long list of whites convicted of usurping history, including Plato, Shakespeare, and Florence Nightingale. Then the white goddess who instigated Macaque's Afrocentric fantasy comes before him. Lestrade condemns her as the manifestation of Western ideology, which equates white with beauty and humanity, and black with ugliness and animality. At his urging, Macaque beheads her. The epilogue returns to the jail setting of the prologue. Macaque wakes from his dream and remembers his real name is Felix Hobain. Freed from jail, Hobain goes back to his home on the mountain. Which he now considers the green beginning of this world. In a 1996 interview, Walcott said, I am a kind of split writer. I have one tradition inside me going in one way, and another tradition going another. His play reflects this split. Critics have argued that Macaque's transformation from Macaque, which means monkey, to his self defined identity as Felix Hobain reproduces the classic literary archetype of the journey of self discovery. Other interpretations read Macaque as a Christ like figure. But if the play exercises such Western literary devices, it engages these with local folklore and dance to create the green beginning of a singularly Caribbean form of drama.